Welcome to Geeks. We have a name. I Geeks. bet you didn't think it sounded like that. <laughs> it's not Baby Fingers, like I said we should name it. Baby Fingers? Yeah, Baby Fingers. I didn't... We could you, just name no, it Baby no, no. Fingers. You had like the one you said the Gallic engine for the your Gallic engine language. was one, but I definitely I definitely pitched Baby Fingers after we stopped recording. I said we'll just call it Baby Fingers until we come up with a new name. You know, you probably which, did. And... Admittedly I stole from Lyle Rath, because that was what he called pregame discharge before he named his show pregame discharge. Baby fingers. That was that's yeah. that is something Lyle would name it. A very Lyle thing to do. Anyway, we have faces now because I have moved. I have moved from my old house into Hello, small room. Avast. Thank you for popping up in the middle of my fucking screen, you sh we, we can't allow you to talk about it. I'm really glad I decided to do a video podcast today when I forgot to shave, so I got the neck beard going. I shaved bad. this morning because I had a job. Oh, interview. good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we'll so what's been new with What's been new with you before we start our podcast in uh, utero? I don't think that's what I meant to say. Well, now that we're both still. properly set up, considering I was on vacation when we did the first one and you were still moving, we're all good. Unfortunately, can't have a beer today because I'm back on my cut. So we're going with Damn. good old H2O. Oh, yeah. <sighs> uh, I feel you there. Mm -hmm. Got my good old... I got to get ready for hot boy summer. Mmm. Gamer girl piss. Anyway, mm. uh, let's <laughs> the be... drink of legends. <laughs> the drink of legends. Jesus, Jesus approved. Did you get the blue hair uh, variant? Anyway. Oh yeah, it's that's the only one. It, <laughs> the daddy issues give it more taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get ripped on my by my friend who does have dyed hair. Oh, get uh, fucked. I hope she watches this. Get fucked. <laughs> oh, don't worry. She doesn't watch anything uh, I make. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. Oh, so. Man. The name Geeks. Geeks. Uh, it is a com it's it's a multiple things. One, it's a combination of both I and Mr. Jacob's name. He goes by yes. Geeks of Dev. I go by Gallic Ender. It's more on his Geeks side. Geeks Dev. But Hold on. Time out. We need a redo. What? Re redo. Cut page Meeks, dry. Meeks. 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 Meeks the Geeks. Dev. Yeah. Or as they call me at McDonald's, Mie. Mie. Do you really put me Meeks for your order name at McDonald's? Uh, yeah, because it's my email. Oh. Yeah, okay. that's the problem. You don't have, like, uh, a traditional so you, business email? Well, I don't like, I don't, I don't, well, no, I do have a traditional business email. I just don't use it for McDonald's. You know, that's uh, fair. I, McDonald's doesn't deserve it, especially after the shit they've been no. pulling recently. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, uh, I just, I, they ask you to put your real name in, and I hate doing that unless mm -hmm. it's like a, something I actually really need them to know my real name for. So I'll just put like a fake name in there. Usually just Meeks Dev. Meeks Dev. Meeks Dev is literally the name I put in there. You know, we, my cousin and I, when we were kids, we used to put in fake names for when we ordered pizza. I don't yeah. know who the hell we thought we were fooling because it's not like we ordered it delivery. We actually like walked in and picked it up because it was cheaper. So I we're walking to... in with these dumbass names, like fucking, like Harry Dick or Maverick, Melhouse, or something like we had. One time we even put Donald Trump. And oh my god! Yeah, we, we were sixteen, so it was like nowhere near his presidency. It. But <laughs> wow, you look a lot different than you did in Home Alone too. Uh, oh man! <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, no, I would just do that, uh, which is very, very fun. Uh, but yeah, no, I've uh, just gotten fully moved in, got my full studio, which may have a bed in the background as well. Hey, humble Hidden beginnings. by my large head. My studio yeah, is shared we're, we're, with my girlfriend. Are... I haven't even hung up. I've lived in this apartment for almost six months now. I haven't even hung up my project board. Yeah, I need to hang up some stuff still. Like some, I have like some album hangers uh, I need to put up for some of my records. Oh, dude, I got my records um displayed on the wall in there like yeah. i actually bought like holders and have my we have her top three and my top three and then i just have like a bunch of band posters next to it i actually i actually have i, I just bought a, a really nice record Ooh, what'd set. you get i got the box set of melancholy and the infinite sadness damn by smashing pumpkins that's awesome or disc lp 
I, I like how we're talking about this on our video game podcast. Hey, it's the warm up. We're getting there. It's the warm up. You know, up. we're yeah. The first five to ten minutes is always just talking bullshit. All right, no. Are, are, so, yeah, are you saying that we might be creating more content by filling the space with shit people might not even care about? I mean, you can. Cons- you can that's <laughs> pretty. That's pretty topical. You can make that. That argument about the podcast in its entirety. So. I played every Assassin's Creed. Uh, <laughs> poor, poor man. Oh uh, man, do we want to get on track or should we? Should well, we? Well, I wanted to talk in? about my super cool record. Box oh yeah, set yeah, yeah. talk about your super bought. cool record box set. Well, for record store day. Oh god, this is a whole fucking like arc. Oh yeah. All right. I, okay, I have an arc too involving record store day that right, I'll talk cool. about we'll, after. We'll years. do the record store day and then we'll hop on topic. So yeah. my record store day uh, story just confirms that my girlfriend is an actual fucking badass and will Sounds do like things for me that most people wouldn't because I had a wedding to attend to on record oh. store day, a wedding that I had to be there for the entirety of because I was a groomsman. So it's oh, like, yeah. yep, no choice. I had to be there. But I it's, missed the concert because I was a groomsman at a wedding once. Oh, damn, who was it? So I, I feel uh, it was the midnight. Uh, synthwave band i love i was i was telling my i was telling a co-worker about it uh, like i'm like yeah they were in town one night and mm-hmm. uh, i couldn't go because i had a prior event and she's like oh was the event that important i'm like well i was a groomsman so yeah a little bit you kind of have to you, you don't get a choice it's not your day yeah. anymore when you become a groomsman so 420 though for uh for for a, a, wedding. a wedding, a record store day yeah. event and of course weed day like yeah. what a fucking yeah, no, like combination of events but Actually, the wedding I was best man to was on 420 as well. Dang. 420 2019, I've mainly been... so that their 50th anniversary will be 4-2069. That's awesome. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love my boy, uh, who I'm not going to name drop on here since he's not a public name. That is so You know so who you are, and I love awesome. you. <laughs> yeah. That... Oh, such a good wedding, too. They're so cute together. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. That's, that's great. I've only been the like, best you know, man you... of one wedding, and that was my cousin. You know what? I, that's fine. I don't want to be the best man anymore. It's too much pressure. Oh, dude. it's It was a lot. Mm-hmm. I I, I, had a, I had to write a speech, and, like, I ended up just winging it. Like, I, I had the speech in my hand. I'm like, this sucks, and I just, like, threw it away. All right. Well, back, it, back to the, the record store day. So, back to the record store, yeah. My favorite band, Dirty Heads. Wrapping the merch. Yeah, I see you're wearing their shirt. Yeah, I love this shirt. It was a birthday present for my girlfriend. Another reason why she's awesome. Um, Yeah. Their record store exclusive was a 4LP box set of their newest album that include all the bonus tracks that they didn't release on the original one, Mm. uh, including a a smaller um, vinyl of their EP that they made a while ago. Mm. And I wasn't going to be able to go, to go to it. So I literally, there was two stores participating in Jacksonville. And my girlfriend went to both of them while I went and did my groomsman's stuff during the wedding. The first store didn't even have it. And that was the same thing that happened the last time I tried to get an exclusive vinyl on record store day. That store just never has what I want. But uh, the other one opened up an hour later. But for record store day, it opened up earlier. But we didn't know that. Uh, so she goes there, waits in line in the hot ass sun for like forty five minutes. Oh no! Yeah, and she finally oh, gets inside and just avoids the whole loop. Just goes straight up to the register. Is like, hey, before I even get into this, do you guys even have this? And the guy said, no, we only got two of them, which is bullshit. And God. Damn it. I felt so bad. I literally, like, sent her, like, 25 bucks. I was like, get whatever the hell you want to eat. Get, like, ice cream, get food. Just, just eat so- you, you've earned it. Thank you for doing yeah, that. Yeah, she tried. She did try. She I actually, like, got it. really upset about it. it. She said she cried when she got into the car. <laughs> oh, I Damn. felt so bad. Well, hey. She wasn't uh, mad at me. Yeah. I felt a little guilty for making her do that. I would have tanked it, no problem, mm. but still. Uh, yeah, no, ga- Gala Girlfriend, you're a winner. Yep, you're thank you for that, babe. Hope you know that. And then I ended up buying the thing on eBay. Yeah, well, at least you got it. From a record store, so I didn't get overcharged. I also went to re- went out towards re- uh, on Record Store Day. I was rushed because I was going to a watch party for uh, the Fallout TV show with oh, a couple damn. friends of mine. You know, I need uh, to watch that. Everyone says it's really good. 
It's excellent. Yeah, no, I have no complaints. It's mm. really, really good. Uh, Kyle McLaughlin's it in it, and I, I love Kyle McLaughlin so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, weirdly enough, only the second best show I've been watching recently. That was the first. Um, <laughs> I've been watching the old 90s X-Men cartoon. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. I love it so much. I still love that I, picture of like Wolverine. Uh, when, like holding the the picture frame. Oh, dude, dude, you don't understand. That bit is so much funnier in context. Oh no, it's not even a. It's not even a picture of Jean Grey. Just a picture of Jean Grey. It's a picture of Jean Grey and and Cyclops together. Oh no. So he's like, oh, I love this girl. I wish this bitch wasn't in it. <laughs> it's, dude, dude. Dude, freaking! I love Wolverine. Wolverine is so pathetic in those first two seasons. Like, holy shit! That's so funny. He's just be like, "Why doesn't this girl love me?" <laughs> Maybe you're wearing bright blue and yellow spandex, looking at a picture in the well, middle to, of the night. You fucking to loser. be fair, Cyclops is also wearing bright blue and yellow spandex. Oh no! And it just gets worse. <laughs> Dude, I mean, uh, are they on the side? Of the, they're not on the side of this cabinet. Damn! I would have just shown the picture of Cyclops from Marvel too. I want it. Um. Oh, dude, I so, see. Yeah, X Men '97 came out, and apparently it's excellent, and I really want to watch it. But it's a continuation That's the, of the, 90s the newer series. one, but it's yes. based off the older one, right? But it's yes, like, they even every... like styled it purposely after that. Yes, and yeah. everything I've heard about it is excellent. Uh, That's good. I, I'm just, before I go on with the record store day story, I have a major crush on Rogue. I love her so much. Oh no, it's, it's just like a drawing, oh, I can't dude. be. I can't be in a relationship because if I touch someone, I will drain them of laugh energy and they'll die. And all I'm thinking is worth it, worth it, laugh worth it, energy, 100%. life energy, life energy. I thought laugh. Like Rogue's whole ability is she can suck the life out of you through skin contact, mm-hmm. and which if she does to a mutant, steals her superpower. Fun fact: the reason she's so powerful in that show is because she literally drained Miss Marvel for like two straight minutes and nearly killed her. Damn. Uh, two minutes. So but that's, yeah, it's quite a. It's quite a time. It's a lot of suck. It's yeah. a lot of suck. Uh, but no, yeah, uh, Rogue is my queen, and I love her. Apparently, her voice actress in 97 is the same voice actress that was in the original, mm-hmm. which apparently is the only case for any of the characters, as far as I'm aware. I, I mean, could be wrong a show that, so but... old, who knows what those voice actors are doing now? Like Probably dead. Exactly. I mean, Probably it's, literally It's impressive dead. enough they got one, really. Like Yeah. But uh, but no, ser- seriously, the uh, old '90s X Men is great. It's campy and has moments of like really bad cheese or ugliness. But like, man, I love it. Also, characters scream a lot. Like, it's bizarre. All right. So, uh, what did you pull for Record Store Day? Yeah, uh, I pulled nothing because I wasted my time. Uh, I went in front of the store, in front of the record store I was gonna go into. I was looking for the weekend live at SoFi Records because I really like the weekend and I really like that concert. Uh, I watched the special on HBO like a million years ago. Nice. Um, but yeah, the uh, at the front there was a pop up shop, and I decided to scroll through there, and I found two albums by The Fix, which is a very old band that I love. Nice. Uh, and I was about to grab them after like browsing for like an hour. I'm like, okay, I need to go. I'm just gonna buy these. And I go to the thing to get them, and the two guys I was talking to like the whole time were basically like, oh yeah, it's actually cash only, and I'm like. In this the day? year of our Lord 2024. I was about to say, like, what? Those are stolen. You have, like, <laughs> they want you cash. Have one, they stole them thing. <laughs> you have one reason to ask for cash, and that's if you're homeless. Like, I, I, that is the only, or if you're going to a strip club. Like a modern store, cash only. Well, it's a pop. It was a pop up store in front. Even of Even the then, like, at store. least have a square it, or something. Yeah, like, you think they'd have a square? Like, oh, very fuck. bizarre. Like the only two people who ever like ask for the only three times I can ever think of like get asking for dollar bills if it's like a tip mm-hmm. and even then like most people can do tip on card uh, if you're homeless and just need money which <clears> hey <throat> look I, I, I'm not gonna judge yeah shit sucks man uh, I, I feel like my earlier comment might have been a little insensitive so I like to apologize it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I, I've done work with homeless people before it's just a tragedy but like that's the only people I can think of who could actually benefit from having like physical currency absolutely and strippers because you're not gonna give a card to a stripper. Oh hell no! I've never, I've never been to a strip club, but that even I know that. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. Okay. Ugh. But anyway, yeah, I ended up walking away with nothing. Damn. Well, so that was neat. Looks like we had similar fates. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so now that we've now that we've uh, wasted a good amount of time, That's we fine. can finally get on track to the main quest line. You Absolutely. know that thing, that that thing that uh, that we don't actually have that much of. So we're filling it with bullshit. Doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah, hey, there's plenty to talk about. So we are wanted we, to. Are we gonna talk about the a million hour RPG? Maybe I have no idea what you're talking about. We'll get into that. So oh, I thought that was <clears> the topic. No, well, it involves the topic. Today's topic yeah. is about like, should the long should the longevity of a game actually affect if it's good or not? Like, is it necessary, or does it act, like? There's a whole lot of things that can go into it, like price tag, content in the game, and just the overall like user experience. Uh, it's not. I mean, we're not like kids anymore where we can just go pick up a game and like do nothing but play said game for like an entire weekend anymore. And then again, or, we or also that... aren't looking for, we also aren't looking to pay $70 for a game that only has three hours of content. So where's like the middle ground in all of this and like what makes the length of a game worth it, essentially? I've just, des I've described this issue as the infinite RPG problem mm -hmm. where uh, I. Okay, let me let me put it like this. Uh, I've played all the Yakuza games, and those games range wildly in terms of length. Uh, Yakuza Five being the most content full game I've ever seen. That's just too damn long. That by the time I was done with it, I was just done. I didn't want to look at Kiryu for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they advertise Yakuza Gaiden, the man who erased his name. And they advertise that it is mercifully short. To the point where I'm like, oh. Oh, I'm actually way more interested now that I know it's a shorter game. Because frankly speaking, I would rather have a short game. If it's going to be a shorter game, I can kind of trust that it's probably going to be mostly killer without much filler. Because mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do in a game is, like, <clears throat> bore me for long stretches stretch of time. It's my problem with Final Fantasy XVI. Is, like, half of its content is so excellent. And it's followed up by just the most filler moments you can ever have in a game. I haven't had a chance to play sixteen as of yet. I'm kind of waiting for the PC port. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Despite, I mean, I have a PS5, It's definitely coming. But, it's yeah. definitely coming. But... <clears throat> I know when I I played um fifteen seven and nine currently. Um, mm, okay. Fifteen. So I'm, I'm just gonna go original. ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. like, it's such a weird type of game because half the sh time you're just riding in the car with your mates. You're yeah, and, or like doing some fucking camping cutscene bullshit or. Even the combat felt really unsatisfying because it was just hold button, maybe teleport, so, or like yeah. set up a combo with one of your boys. But I will have to say, like, the voice acting was excellent. The music, of course, for every Final Fantasy game, fantastic. Uh, the story? Oh, yeah. I mean, I Final mean, Fantasy it, bad music. It did, it did be... the job. I mean, yeah. it honestly just felt like a, a basic anime type deal, but the characters were oh, so likable that it kind of enhanced it a bit for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, hanging out with the Dude Bros is probably the best part of that game. Exactly. Just hanging out with uh, Noctis, uh, Ignis, Daddy, and uh, <laughs> and Cookman. And, and Cookman. Captain Captain Chef. Uh, but no. Uh, fault of a new recipe. Well, that's great. Like, he would just say that out of the out of the blue. <laughs> like, listen, Noctis, I'm sorry that your home has been destroyed. Have you ever thought about having a delicious cup noodle with all of its great ingredients Holy mixed in? Holy shit, the cup noodles, dude! That I watched Plastered my dad play that. That game had so many him, sponsorships that it was like uh, me, Coleman. I think was also so. Do, thing you, in do it. you know why Final Fantasy 15 is like that? I heard it was an un. It was like it was supposed to be a completely different game. Or is it actually supposed, supposed to be like a mobile game? Three different games. It was supposed to be three different games. Oh no! Tetsuya Nomura originally was making this uh, spinoff to Final Fantasy Thirteen about a kingdom like ensued by violence. It was going to be called Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus, mm -hmm. uh, and it was going to be this like hyper violent, uh, essentially what Final Fantasy Fifteen was, but without the party aspect to yeah. that extent. And it was going to be like way bloodier, and that was the original idea. But it still took place in the same universe, right? 
as 13. Mm -hmm. uh, then it was Final Fantasy 15, which was originally going to be this massive opera. Originally, it was supposed to be a musical. The fuck? Tatiana Moore wanted to be a musical. Like uh, a eventually... video game that's a musical. Yeah. And, he, and it's, I mean, people would later go on to do it. I mean, uh, there was one by a bunch of Obsidian devs that's apparently great that I, I forgot the name of. Uh, if, any, if, if, if you find it afterwards, please edit it in the episode where I said it. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, the game was you eating so many resources from Square Enix and was having had so little success that they gave it to some other guy who I'm going to look up right now because I don't want to forget his name. Uh, but I believe it was his first time ever fully directing a video game. I, I mean, for a first attempt, not bad, but and it, it's the, just uh, he like obviously the assets like that, Hajime Tabata. There we are. Hajime the man just Tabata. obviously just wanted to hang out with his boys because that's basically all you're doing. You're just sitting in that yeah. car, riding and for like, God knows how long, and you can't even skip it. And that's why the game is like half finished. And that's actually a perfect example of what I wanted to talk about as far as like the Infinity RPG because mm -hmm. 15 has maybe three to four hours of like actually really good content mm -hmm. followed by a whole lot of faffing about doing nothing important uh and not necessarily in a way that's fun like sometimes i'll do something that's not important in a video game and it's just fun like i mean even looking at the, for at the very I beginning think, of the game you kind of get a sense of like how much nothing you're in for because God. the first thing you're told to do is to go out into this field that's like three miles away on by foot and then slay this monster. And it takes for fucking ever to get out there because Noctis is so damn slow, even when he's sprinting. Dude, the game is like a constant back and forth through a story that is nonsensical. Mm -hmm. It There's like no real motivation for like the first few hours. Like The motivation the is just is to hear more dialogue from the boys. It, that's like, it. That's the really only thing it. to think of. And the world building is such a mess... Like, later dungeons are literally using store-bought assets, not mm -hmm. even original assets. I don't know if you know that. One of the main dragon bosses that you fight, like, twice in the game is a open-source Unreal asset. That's hilarious. I think it was Unreal. It's an open-source asset, which apparently is just because they, that game was rushed to high hell. And it kind of shows and how badly it runs and how unfinished you think it, get, it is. You think you, a company by like the way, Square you Enix. want the complete story? Buy the four character DLCs. What? Uh, oh, God. Oh, did you not know about that? I kind of... Is that like when they grow up or something? Because I see the yeah. picture now and it, it looks... It's just Noctis with a beard. And like... Yeah, uh, so, no, the DLCs uh, actually cover each character's backstory. Oh, God. So it covers, like, how Ignis joined the group, how Agnes Pompey, joined the group, Pompus, and how Ugnis joined the group. Name? Prompto. 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 Yeah. Prompto. Little bitch boy Prompto yeah. with his tiny little I'm gonna gun. Free oh, no, that's Ignis's... Is no, Ignis is the the chef guy. Is he? Yeah, because they call him Iggy. I thought that was Umpto. Umpto, <laughs> I don't Prompto. remember the names. Ogdo Bogdo. You're, you're Noctis. My favorite you're... Final Fantasy character, Glup Shedo. You play as Noctis, and with your with your three mates, Octo, Bokdo, and Mokdo over here, fucking... <laughs> As Noctis Lucius Calum, you have to travel across the kingdom, all while assuring everyone that you're not gay. I will say, that car... And you were just really close with your friends. Everyone wanted the regalia. I don't care what you... Like, that regalia's car was cool. so badass. No, regalia's cool. I wish, I, I wish you could actually control it, but, I mean, it's cool. You kinda can. You can... Yeah. You can, like... It's, kinda, like, it's like controlling kinda, a fucking train. Kinda is not can, though. Uh, you're right. Uh, but, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, Final Fantasy XV. So, a lot of fluff. A lot of fluff. And then you take a... And then I want to, like, move on to another example of, like, probably the most yeah. controversial Zelda title out there, Breath of the Wild. Oh, here we right? go. Okay. A lot of, like, I've seen every take under the sun when it comes about that game. It's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. It's not a Zelda game. It's the most no, Zelda it's not, game. No. It's the fact... It, it's not actually good. It There's, like, a whole bunch... It's it's literally fluff about it's literally like the most well-designed map ever like literally everybody on every single spectrum is just fucking 
hating or oh, yeah. praising this game. And a oh, Breath of the Wild is my number two game of all time. Exactly. Like, I think I think it's I'm excellent. On I don't that, think it's a I'm Zelda on the boat game. that Tears of the Kingdom is better, but I will always have respect for for Breath of the Wild. We'll get that's a debate for another day. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, point- actually, no. Actually, you know what? I think Tears of the Kingdom actually would make sense for me to talk about because I have, I feel like Tears of the Kingdom especially kind of made me feel this way. Really? About the Infinity RPG. So a what's, bit. what's okay. the aspect of it? Because Breath of the Wild, I'll, I'll go ahead and say the base Hyrule map, probably one of the best designed maps oh, in absolutely. gaming history. No absolutely. matter where you okay. are, there's something to do. There's a puzzle to solve. The uh, there's a core. I think the Koroks were fucking bullshit. I don't really care for the Koroks, okay. but no, no, no. It's just, they're just kind they're, of they're there. a cute idea. They're a cute it was idea. a cute idea, and it was a good, it was a good distraction when you're just kind of vibing out in the hills. But eventually, the puzzles just kind of start getting. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're doing this again. But so, so that's that's how I feel about like 99 percent of the building in Tears of the Kingdom. The building. Yeah, the buildings. What do you mean the building? It feels, like the building, okay. like the building mechanic, or the building? Yes, the building mechanic. I feel like it is constantly forcing you to mess with the building mechanic in ways I just don't want to. And the I don't. The I never had that problem. <sighs> okay, so Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, I don't regard as like re, like standard Zelda games. I've described them under a new title that I've called Zelda Gaiden. Zelda as Gaiden. sort of a spin. It's how I've been calling it because I'm just like it doesn't fit in with any of the other Zelda games, but I still think it's excellent. Because but I can't call it my favorite Zelda game because it doesn't feel like a Zelda game to me. Um, What's the first Zelda so, game you played? Uh, Twilight Princess. That's why it doesn't feel like a Zelda game to you. Well, no. If my first one was like if if my first one was like Zelda One because I played through Zelda One. Zelda doesn't One really feel is, like that is either. Pra- Breath of the Wild is practically Zelda 1 on, like, crack and steroids combined. Yeah, it's Zelda 1's, like, design statement, but it's not Zelda 1's, like, feel. Like, it's it feels fundamentally different to me. Because of the technology and the improvements. But it's, yeah, basically, no, the same, it's basically the same premise. You wake up, you walk out of your cave, and boom, you're set free. Go do whatever the hell you want. Explore what you want. Do whatever, no, do whatever you want in whatever order you can. It's literally... The, the but the way it. everything works, you're not collect you're not collecting new items to be able to get to new areas. You're you, not. That's basically like, the weapons, the armor, the master sword. Yeah, it's just we- weapons, armor. Seeds. But like, we're not talking like boomerang, hookshot, any of those. Like none you get of the that's boom- actually. You can the find game. boomerangs. Well, yeah, but and you don't not, have the hookshot the... because you have the fucking iPhone of destiny. Like, yeah. <laughs> like... No, I'm saying like the the core part of like the Zelda experience is very similar to uh, like your average Metroidvania, where you are collecting these items that help you progress farther in the game to areas that you usually wouldn't be able to go to. And due to the design nature of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, that can't be instated because that would imply that you'd be able to that you wouldn't be able to actually have this full open world. And I get that, and I actually really love the way Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are designed, but they're so counter to, like, your average Zelda design. Not... It's not to say... It's not to say those are bad games. Again, Breath of the Wild, probably my second favorite game of all I'm time. Not, I'm not tied with Elden Ring or anything. We can have a discussion no, yeah, yeah. about Zelda titles, but, like... Oh, no, no, totally, yeah, no. I'm just giving my, my statement on it. All right, well, maybe that'll be oh, another episode. If What classifies a Zelda game? Um, yeah, the, but Tears of the Kingdom, right? Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like with Breath of the Wild, going through that map, as we said, is perfectly designed. was mm-hmm. such a magical experience. It really was. Like find like hearing the legend of the Goron that apparently fell off the bridge, and you can still hear his ghost, and it turns out there is a Goron down there just making a golf course. Yeah. Uh, going going to like the top of this like tower in the middle of nowhere only to find out that he clan is just living there. Mm-hmm. There's so many really cool things to do in Breath of the Wild. And it feels like there's a discovery around every corner. I remember going to like some random island. So I'm like, I bet I can go there. And that was a trial. Yes. That was a literal like trial dungeon. It shook it up awesome. everything. It's like, boom, you're naked now. Good luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> good luck, dipshit. Survive. Exactly. Uh, and that's awesome. And then Tears of the Kingdom, I felt like was a marked step back. Like mainly, be- okay. So I Are don't. Are you like talking the about in terms of its length or in terms of like what it had? Like, in terms of what it has. Mm. 
right? Okay, so the enemy variety is a little better, but not enough for me to justify it as its own thing. Eh, uh, I'd say it's relatively the same with, like, a couple new ones added in. I mean... Weapon degradation somehow feels worse. And I know they added the whole, like, fuse mechanic to, mm -hmm. you know, make that, like, counteract that bit, but that's just putting a band-aid on a bigger issue. It's not really fixing it. Yeah. I don't hate degradation. I like the idea that it forces you to, like, have to switch weapons, but in... I don't know what it is about Tears of the Kingdom, but I just felt like... Now I'm not only dealing with, like, uh, limited d limited uses on weapons, I'm also dealing with the resources I have to attach to them, and now mm -hmm. those are limited as well. The only so thing most of the I time, didn't like about the I would degradation... Just stockpile... I'm sorry. Take him. Oh, really? the, the only thing I didn't like about the degradation um, in Tears of the Kingdom was... Uh, so Tears of the Kingdom was, like, Zelda content galore. Like, every oh, yeah. single fucking costume is in the game and you can find it with or without the oh, amiibo, I'm, I'm, which I'm think... running around with the twilight princess outfit like right exactly now. and i'm running around with the fierce deity set like yeah um but you can also find a lot cooler weapons like you can actually yeah. find the fierce deity sword but once you break it it's fucking yes, gone yeah. and it's gone like, it's why gone would you skis. put a durability on that i i, th I no, wish no. it would like recharge like the master sword uh, well i mean you could just you could just do the, the gimmick of uh, feed it to one of those Octoroks and then they'll clean it for you. But even then, Repair like, it. I have to, like, hold on. It's just permanently taking up a weapon slot and I'm not going to be able to use it till I go back that, and find that Octorok. And, and only, that is... Like, dude, uh, I literally, literally on my map, I have I have pinpointed every single Octorok location. God forbid so you I fuck can... up the weapon throw and it hits the damn thing. <laughs> oh no, you don't throw it. You just drop it and then use the magnet to put it close to him. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, no, it, it's... <laughs> the thing, I'm Tears of the Kingdom, it, <laughs> I don't... Tears of the Kingdom is not... I don't think it's a bad game, but I don't like it nearly as much as Breath of the Wild because one... The gimmicks it's going for don't appeal to me. I don't much care for the building at all. It was fun at first when I was just goofing around, and then as I played more with it and saw its limits, I just did not want to use it. I don't know what you mean limit, man. This is the shit that people have, people have made, like, full functioning Oh, people made suits. really cool things. People made really cool things, but there is, like, an upper limit to, like, what you can make. I get, like, that is just, true. Yeah. I mean, every tool's and, got a limit, but... And that's not, even, that's not even my biggest problem with the game, really. Mm -hmm. Uh... I, this might be controversial. I don't know. That's okay. I don't care for either the sky or the underground segments of the mm. game. I thought they were so cool at first. And as I'm like playing with the sky islands, I'm like, these feel like filler and I'm going underground. And I'm like the under, I actually a hot take. I actually really like the underground more than I like the upper, the, the sky islands. Cause I, I can like agree with more you on interesting that stuff down there. I like the aesthetic even then, of the Sky Islands more, but the Underground has a lot more in it. But but even then, like, once that magic kind of wears off, it's just like, oh, it's just a bunch of empty space that's dark because they don't want you to see how much empty space there is. At least that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Like, look, I'm not the arbiter of taste, but that I, I feel like... I feel like Tears of the Kingdom, especially compared to Breath of the Wild, is a lot more filler. I can see that in a sense of there's a lot more stuff. And that's essentially what they did from Breath of the Wild, which was typically, a, I would say, a 40 to 60 hour experience. Should you try to oh, I got, 100%? I got like maybe 120 hours. Same, in but like Wild. that was basic. It was mostly just me dicking around, right? I mean, but, yeah, that's part of the experience. I haven't beaten Tears of the Kingdom yet because I'm trying to 100% it like I did with Breath of the Wild. I'm like I two shrines away. Yet, I just gotta I've find them. Interest. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a chore. But it's rough, man. The whole I concept of the the, uh, the whole argument of the game was like there's very little like substance and more like fluff in the terms of shrines. Uh, items to find and yeah, that sort of thing being like re rep uh, repeated over and over the shrines, and over at least to me the shrines and tears of the kingdom feel so much worse than breath of the wild like the shrines and tears of the kingdom were are 
like the Shrines of Breath of the Wild are like uh, we're gonna give you a weird problem and you have to figure out how to how to fix it. The Shrines and Tears of the Kingdom are we're gonna give you a really weird problem. You're gonna have to figure out how to fix it. Spoiler alert: you're gonna have to build something. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that with the building. And then occasionally you get the one that's like. Uh, we're taking away all your weapons. Go kill all these enemies. Uh, you I actually like weapons, those so ones because it them. makes me think a little outside of the box a bit. Yeah, um, it's but... just... It's just, it's just wears It's on better me. than the combat trials that are in Breath of the Wild where you're just hit with this rope. Like, if you don't have enough weapons, you're not fucking getting past it. I I actually prefer the combat trials in Breath of the Wild. Hey, that's only okay. because Only because they're shorter. They are shorter. But yeah. when you start getting to like I'm the more advanced less ones, and you don't have enough weapons, you're just kind of boned. Like if I if I see one of those if I see one of those shrines in Breath of the Wild, I'm just like, Ugh, whatever. At least it's not going to last long. And then if I go to like that in Tears of the Kingdom, I'm like, I don't even want to be here. Mm. So like, it, I will it, say with yeah. the building, it is 100 optional outside of the shrines. Like I did not build that much when I was in the overworld. There's, there's a couple of those dungeons that expect you to build. Well, that's why I said outside of the shrines yeah. and maybe the dungeons, I guess, because they wanted you to, like, there, fiddle there around also with, like, many, a big wheel or something. Most of the side content is based on building. Yeah. Like, uh, holding all the, the signs up or oh, that's getting, so <laughs> getting the Korok over to his friends or... a bunch of the side quests involving okay, like Korok torture. your house Korok oh, torture was oh, fucking dude, funny <laughs> I I can probably find it in my I can probably send it to you right now so that you can put it up on stream Yeah, I definitely have a picture of a crucified Korok uh, that I, I crucified myself <laughs> not even joking I swear to god cross and all it's there. I feel like another side of humanity was was shown with Korok torture. It's just it's just everyone who didn't play Breath of the Wild is like, oh, this is terrible. Why would they do this? And everyone who has played is like, the little bastard deserved it. <laughs> this is what you get for making me find all these seeds for a literal pile of shit. Like, literal shit. Literal I remember shit. I had a buddy in college who was playing through Breath of the Wild. Was so excited about 100. percent I know you get something really cool finding all the Korok seeds, and they did. And I'm like, hey, how was it? He's like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. <laughs> I and I didn't know there. why until I found out about the shit. And it's like, oh, it's so good. It's so funny. It's so good. Also, I just passed the picture we all took of uh, going dicks out in Baldur's Gate 3. Beautiful. Uh, cause the, yeah, you want to talk about a game that's like all killer, no filler. Baldur's Gate. Boy, I Baldur's Gate 3. Still haven't fucking beaten that game. I know, neither have I. I have over 200 hours in fucking Baldur's Gate 3. I still haven't beaten it. But every time I play it, I discover something new, which is like, I guess... It's, man, Baldur's Gate 3 is so cool. I wish I was more than halfway done with the game. <laughs> I'm, I don't even know if I'm halfway through Act 3. But Act 3 is like 60% of the game. <laughs> God damn it. That's what's so nuts about it. Uh, it's like what? not only is the game big but act 3 is like bigger than like the first two combined but like it's so good it's so oh, it's really good, good. Well, it's like a game that, that took thing... forever to beat but you thought was bullshit Did, like what game you know it took forever to beat that I thought was bullshit uh, uh, I'm trying to think alien isolation is way too long oh god I think that's just because there's a lot of hiding yeah, I mean, I like Alien Isolation a lot, but I feel like 25 hours is a lot to ask for that kind of game. Yeah. You can only sneak Boy, around. that... You can only get scared by the, the world's scariest monster for so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, Even then, like, the, like, it was really hard to navigate that game, too. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say Yakuza 5 really grates on you by the time you finish the game, because holy shit, that's a long game. Mm-hmm. That... that th no other... Yakuza game is that long. Eight apparently is pretty long, but the, I don't know if it's as long as five. Like five is too much. I'm gonna go with an indie title, and I'm gonna say Bolt Gun. Real okay. Bolt is that, does that count as indie? I figured that was double A. Uh, probably double A, but yeah, it was made with by an indie studio that had like okay, basically. I mean, they're, they're I haven't played any of their past games, but it didn't look any like appealing to me at least mm. but holy shit especially because they reuse a lot of bosses 
throughout the entirety of the game. Like, I've probably fought the same boss. It, like, there's, like, oh, three yeah. bosses they, re they revolve around, and I fought them all at least, like, 12 times by the end of the fucking game. And... I don't Anyways, know. I, I, the, the gimmick of find three keys and open three doors got old really yeah, quickly. I, mean, I, I get they were going for like old, Do uh, old like Doom and Duke Nukem level design, but it does get boring. By the way, I did send you the crucified Koroks. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll you put can that use on those. screen. Yeah, put right that now. on screen. There it is. Yeah, Boom. right now. <laughs> 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 But that, but with Bolt Gun, that was an example of, like, they pushed it out too long, I guess, because they thought it was too short initially, because there's a lot of repetitive-looking levels, there's a lot of repetitive bosses, and there's just a lot of rep repetitive gimmicks. And yeah. I would have been perfectly fine with, like, maybe 12 levels that all looked different and all had, like, different uh, puzzle aspects about them with maybe, like, a couple bosses sprinkled here and there. At least it would have, like, yeah. kept them fresh, and that way they would have had such a solid foundation, so when they inevitably make bolt gun 2 because i believe the uh the first title did well enough that it's like why wouldn't you make a sequel especially with the warhammer ip uh mm -hmm. but it's just they just overdid it i think they stretched themselves too thin with it like pacing really has to do with making a game feel too long because there are some mm -hmm. games i'm like i think this is the accurate amount of length it should have been for the price point yeah. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, I feel like, is a game that I think felt too long, but I think that's just due to a lot of pacing issues. Mm -hmm. There's so much of that game that is just talking while moving through boring areas. I didn't and have it's, that problem. I, how am I having, not the, having the these boat. issues that you have? The boat. The boat? Okay, I can see the, the boat. Oh, no, sorry, not the boat. Not the boat. Sorry. Uh, the Going on the back of the yak in, uh, oh. with What's-Her-Name. Yeah. And you're just shitting about or climbing the wall. Yeah. Like climbing the wall I thought was cool, but okay. god that takes way too when long. When you were Kratos. Great game. When you were yeah, Atreus, no, yeah. it was boring when as shit. When yeah. you were Atreus, <laughs> it's just like, oh god, it's all filler. <laughs> it all feels like filler. It doesn't even feel good to play as. Like his combat is just literally mash the button. It's I, I mean I mean, there's some stuff in there that I think is genuinely really cool. I like his transformations. I think that's neat. I, I but, guess. Man. They don't feel good, though. They're really clunky. Yeah, a little Especially bit. Especially the I, wolf. I can agree with that. Yeah. It, it's a little clunky. I'll fully admit that. But no, yeah, it's like... The the problem is, it's all... It, we, we, you briefly mentioned it earlier. It also comes... It does come down to, like, hey... If I'm going to be paying $70 for my video game, mm -hmm. it better be worth the $70. And hours mm -hmm. per minute of, or dollars per hours of gameplay is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is, while I think overrated, uh, I understand because I wouldn't pay $70 for Journey. And I love Journey. Mm -hmm. But like $70 is a lot to ask for for a game that is, like, not a full-ass, like, 20-hour thing. There's also the argument of the game not... If you were to, like, play through a game straight through, it's, like, a two-hour experience. Opposed to, like, yeah, but that's the getting game. the content turn, uh, like turns it into a... To maybe like a six to eight hour experience. Yes, and a Bethesda game. A Bethesda game or. Uh, Mar I'm playing or through New Vegas right now, and that's not really Bethesda, but like it's it's very similar. It's like yeah, if you just follow the main story beats, you can just go to New well, Vegas another, and like another good example from like quantity over quality, at least in this concept. You? Like it, like the two, uh, Mar the two brand new 3D Mario titles for um, yeah. Like Mario Odyssey, you could probably speak, people have sped run that game in like hour and a half. And if, yeah, and, but all the content lies in finding all the moons. But there's a fuck ton of moons. Holy shit! And that could technically count as filler, depending on how much fun you find that collectathon style game to be. Mm -hmm. I personally loved ninety nine percent of it, with a few challenges I thought were kind of bullshit. Yeah, the not because they were hard, but because that they were stupid boring. ass jump rope. I'm yeah. never gonna be able to get that moon. You have to do. Oh, I got that. Uh, See, so you know, one of the easiest way to get that man. Huh. Uh, get on the get on the moped. Really. The moped's jump height is significant. Is way more consistent. 
I'll have to try that, but I don't have yeah. any plans. So <laughs> it's I'll, so I'll, silly. I don't it's have so any silly. plans to 100% Odyssey yeah. anytime soon. Oh, no, um, yeah, that's fair. I've like 95 percent of it at most. I will say the perfect 3D Mario title to me was the spinoff they did with the re-release of 3D World, Bowser's Fury. I oh, is that good? I loved it. Oh, my God, it's great. I really want to play that at some point. I just, it's bu- I just even haven't if you done 100%, it because Nintendo will never discount their games. <laughs> even if you 100% it, you're probably only going to look at like three to four hours, but it's such a fun little adventure. And it's like slapped, and to me, like the playtime's forgiving because it's slapped on the back of another great Mario yeah. game, which is 3D Land. But I think like them, oh, yeah. 3D Land's really or 3D World. You're thinking 3D of, World, actually. 3D Land was on yeah. the DS, which I actually think yeah, is better 3DS, than 3D yeah. World. But I like, I, mm, I'm not sure. I really love 3D World. I really, I like both. They're both great. But they're both very good. I beat both. They're great. Me too. Um, but yeah, Bowser's Fury. It's like the perfect little bite-sized adventure. Nothing yeah. about it feels like rushed. Nothing about it feels no too filler. long. Exactly. It, and if you 100% it, Bowser gets like the last fight with Bowser, he gets like glowing white hair instead of the fiery red. And it's oh, really shit. cool. That's super dope. That's yeah. Super if you dope. look on, um, I actually still have the stream up. If you that I 100%ed it the day it came out, but you're going to you see, f- golden... you're going to see fat face me. So be prepared for that. Yeah. You got to see golden. F- you think golden fat Mark, I said golden fat Mario. I meant golden cat Mario. You said fat face. It got me. It got mm-hmm. me thinking. That was when I was uh, a chubby you, boy. You, you lost so much weight. You look great, by the way. Um, Thank you. I lost seventy pounds. You think, damn. Mm-hmm. I, I keep hearing that number and it keeps shocking me. Meanwhile, I've gained twenty. Anyway, hey, no worries, brother. Uh, do you think golden cat Mario could beat Frieza? Like when he's really big after hitting the bell. Yeah. No. No. At, Frieza so. could just casually blow up planets. What if what if Frieza killed Yoshi? Do you think Mario could get angry enough <laughs> to beat Frieza? <laughs> I don't see it in his personality. No. Mario no, yeah. Mario can he not even was turn on my friend! <laughs> I only dropped him in a pit when I needed to reach an area, but he was still my friend. <laughs> you a fool! Woohoo! <laughs> I've only killed him and his offspring multiple, multiple times, and I've lost track of who's the original Yoshi. <laughs> Kame, ame, aha! <laughs> oh, man. No. Uh, no I think Mario would just... That. I don't think he would get mad at that he killed Yoshi. I think he'd get mad that Frieza was just simply in the way or, like, took Peach <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> He's going to jump on Frieza's head. Exactly. <laughs> um... But yeah, he gets shorter every time Mario uh, bounces on his head. He just goes. Down <laughs> he's <long>. losing forms. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh, so but, funny. But uh, oh, it's so good. I miss, I miss Toriyama. Same. Uh, but yeah, no, like the worst thing a game can do, in my opinion, is waste my time. Mm. I would, like, nothing is worse to me than when your game is more filler than actual content. If your game's a ninety-hour game. I want at least 80% of it to be killer. If it, I don't want it to be modern Assassin's Creed where it's like 88% fluff. Dude, origins broke me. I'm being nice. I'm being nice. I'm being nice by saying only 88% fluff. It's origins, Ragnarok, Odyssey. It's, it's all just brutal, man. Mm hmm. The new it's era so of Assassin's brutal. Creed, like past... Or Valhalla, rather. Sorry. Valhalla. Was whatever. It's the same shit. Okay. I haven't even Norse. tried the new one. called Norse. The... Uh, so Mirage was actually the most interesting one to me in a while because it was short. It's apparently like, we're, we're, we're shortening the scale. And I'm like, great. I would rather play a shorter game that is less filler than a massive game that's mostly filler. Yeah, I felt that way when I played Rogue. I thought Rogue was yeah. probably one of the best titles. Yeah, because it's, of its Rogue's length, it, then it differentiated. Wait, I'm thinking of four. I actually, sorry, I, I actually didn't play four. I didn't actually play Rogue. Rogue is uh, really I, good. I, I have I, played four. I've heard Rogue's good. Rogue is four if four didn't have so much fluff in it. I See, four I felt like was relatively light on the fluff for the most part. Like the treasure hunts were kind of fluff, but like weren't too terrible. 
I'd say the worst part I was think, collecting the sea shanties and feathers. I, I think, okay, maybe, I think it's uh, the fact that it's scaled down and that it didn't take as long to get from place to place like it did yeah. before. That's what, didn't become, a lot, that's what made Rogue feel yeah. a bit better. Uh, yeah. Because, like, a, half the appeal of, like, because AC4 was actually a launch title. And they wanted to show off, like, mm, look at these graphics and look at this ocean. Look at you, you played oh on the God. Xbox One and the sea won't look like fucking jello. It does chop. Sometimes the ship will go into the water and rise out of it like it's being summoned by a Jesus. I love that. Which did <laughs> I happen. I absolutely to love that. Still less like buggy than your average just Fallout game. Pulse on the ground. No, oh, just so like good. sling off. Oh, that's the jank I love. Yeah. Keep that. Keep doing that. But all the other bullshit you're doing, stop that. <laughs> but no, yeah, I would like. It's the problem of like so many people try to advertise their game as like oh 100 plus hours of content. And I'm like, but is it really though? Mm-hmm. Or is it 10 hours of content that you've stretched? Have you played Starfield? I have played Starfield. Yes. Because I hear it's it's just fluff and it's bad fluff. If that like. Is it's really bad. I have played Starfield, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sign of a coping Bethesda fan. <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, okay. I uh, played Starfield because I found out what the New Game Plus hook was, and I thought that was fascinating. Is it? It's just like uh, the... You go into another universe, essentially, and things are the way the, way the universe thing works, works is fascinating. And that's a cool idea. I like that idea. Uh, but, but then again, the you can also get a better is, experience with that with No Man's Sky. But even then, No Man's Sky wasn't... No, uh, no Man's Sky is another problem that has gotten better, but I still just don't like the core gameplay loop. Mm-hmm. Um, man, just... Starfield feel like, from moment one, feels like this is a game that has been stretched. Like, down to perks, some of the perks in that game are just basic features in earlier Bethesda games. Like, hey, do you want a sneaking icon to show that whether you're actually stealth or not, or if anyone can see you? Yeah, that's a perk. We have jetpacks in the game. Do you want to be able to actually use them? Wait, what the fuck? That's a perk. Dude, some of this is just basic shit, like in Skyrim. Like, the whole Dude, stuff thing, like, the, it, was, it was just the eye. That, I thought that was the coolest way to display self. I, to display I, self. Don't, I don't want a perk just so I can open a soda can. Like, it's what it feels like. Oh like and it, it feels like even their skill trees like they didn't have enough good skills so they had to stretch them out. On like I've I've heard there's some really cool stuff in Starfield like legitimately like some really cool side quests. But the problem is, is I don't want to have to wade through a bunch of shit to actually get I, to them. And exactly, and I do walk not through want empty. To, I do not terrain. want to pay pay anything more than fifteen dollars for Starfield. Oh, dude! Like, I just played. Uh, I just played it on Game Pass when I had Game Pass. Well, there you go. You can do that. Too. I, I I I didn't even spend the money. <laughs> That, it's, you it's did it rough, right. Man. You did it right. Yeah, it's at rough. You, at least you had Game Pass to go to after yeah. that bullshit. <laughs> like, like there's, like I would say, I would rather like, even like disappoint a game that disappointed me like Deathloop because it mm-hmm. just didn't have a lot of content in it. I still prefer like ninety nine percent of the ga- time to a game like Starfield, which is argue or roughly around the same price, but isn't nearly as coherent. But then you, you know? have, but then you have like the or, or tight, games like I mean, uh, let's just say Skyrim, right? You can yeah. easily just do the main quest line, and then once that's done, you have the rest of the world at your disposal, or you could choose to go about it. Would yeah, say- the thing is, the thing is with Skyrim is I could literally map out the entirety of Skyrim in my head right now. Yeah, now you I could can, tell you the, but the I could tell you like the main plot of the game from beginning to end. I don't think I can tell you a single name of a single character in Starfield. So not even like the plot was memorable. No, there's nothing to it. Like yeah. this is the most linear a Bethesda game has been and even then it's just way too like it's way too open and empty. Mm-hmm. Like it feels bad, it, which is a shame because the combat's actually the best it's ever been for a Bethesda game, in my opinion. Like yeah, the guns I actually feel like guns. The guns feel like guns. Damn, they feel way what better a than shame, Fallout Four. Because that is holy shit. That and that was... is the one thing I'll give Starfield. Oh, sorry, one of two things I'll give Starfield. The ship build is really fun. Okay, 
I made a robot. I made a giant like Gundam robot that has arms out like this. <laughs> and whenever you fast travel, it would show your ship like dramatically flying next to a planet. And so all you see is like. <laughs> I was gonna make a ship called the. I was gonna steal an idea from our our, our priest friends and uh, name a ship the Nematode, and it was just gonna be all the way uh, just just as vertical as possible, as one vertical column with jets on it. That's amazing. The idea was the only way to get to the cockpit is to climb the massive amount of ladders they'd have to stack up. You evil. It bastard. was gonna be like unbelievable. The nematode is my best idea, which I stole directly from our priest friend, because I'm a hack. Hey, <laughs> you're uh, the you're the step that made it a reality. Okay, some I'm, people. I'm, I'm not ideas. the stepdad. I'm the dad that stepped up. I'm the dad that stepped up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not the I'm not the stepdad. I'm the dad who stepped on you. Oh. Kinky. Anyway. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. Uh, no. But, uh, man, this is a lot. I just Why do you do this? this? Con- okay, first it was the this tails bench and now a- you're stepping on people like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm stepping on the tails bench. No. <laughs> oh, Get off the tails bench. Get away from that child tails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, I hope no one looks up Tailsbench because of this podcast. I don't want them that to be their awakening. I don't know, but out of the, t- out the, of the three of bits the I've released, Cannon. that was the most popular one. Was it actually? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you've done. You have to live with your actions. So you exposed really worried... innocent eyes to that poor fox on a I bench. I really hope not. I really hope not because that is it's definitely your fault. Like... It's your fault. Look, <laughs> did the screaming look... Sonic kid teach look, you nothing? Hey, li- listen. Don't look it up. It's not worth it. It's literally not worth it. This is a two girls one cup or blue waffle situation. You don't look them up. It's not worth it. It's not worth. You don't need to know. Oh, Lord. Uh, I, I, I was feeling a little worried that uh, we really were like, we're not nearly as coherent in this episode as we were last episode where we stayed on point for most of it. But isn't that kind of the point that a lot of these really long, like lengthy RPGs kind of lose the grip on the player by just filling it with fluff and filler? That, this like, whole isn't episode actually has been a metaphor. Uh, yeah, definitely intentional. Definitely intentional. <laughs> Not at all. We're just... But no, yeah. I think we're just uh, both... Oh, have you been diagnosed for ADHD? Uh, autism, but I don't think ADHD. Ah. Yeah. I probably do, though. Same. I don't want so many tangents. <laughs> uh, regardless. But yeah, no, like... the the Whenever I'm, like, looking at a new game and they're just advertising me millions of hours of, of gameplay, I'm just like, oh, cool. You know it's I can't, getting bad. I, I no, I don't think it, uh, no I I, I want to say I don't, I don't know think it's I think going to be I think bad at this but day I'm and age, instantly like okay I don't have time for this game mm, you true. know like Being it like okay I see the I see the trailer for uh, a smaller game like uh, Penny's Big Breakaway which just came out and that game is just a little platformer and boy it looks awesome it looks great and it's short. Because I don't well, want to spend on? like thirty bucks. So there, there's your next point. Like, am I paying yeah. the right amount for how long I'll be playing it for? Do you think? I mean, if I guess if you had enough fun and you felt like yeah. it was satisfying enough, despite it being short, then it would be worth it. Because that's how I felt the first time I played Doom Eternal. Yeah, like I was like, damn, that was awesome. I wish there was more. Yeah. And then I played it again, but I didn't, despite it not being as long as I wanted it to, I still felt fine with paying 60 bucks for it because it was, it was just fun all the way through. There's a lot of games I definitely feel like are underpriced for what they bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush is $30 and I easily would have paid $60 for that. The game is incredible, but I don't God, think I people would have game. loved it as much. It's, it's my game of the year for last year. Even with Baldur's Gate 3 being that year, Hi-Fi Rush is still my game of the year. I oh just God, put it, it on my Steam me. Deck, so I might be it's chilling so out. It's so good. It's so good. When you get to the first boss, if you aren't like, if you aren't hooked on the game after the first boss, like, I don't even know. I also you. heard the music in that game uh, is incredible. 
It's sick. I really want the vinyl, but it's like a hundred bucks. Eh. Damn. Yeah. It's rough. I just paid uh, 150 for the Dirty Heads Bot Six, but you know. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I definitely didn't pay 90 for Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. Or 150 for Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Dude, every time Dirty Heads comes out with like a tour or a new piece of merch, uh, like a vinyl or something, I'm like, like yay, my sound. wallet is going to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can think of like so many games, though, that I've played that have just been like. Oh, it feels like so much of this game is just wasting my time. Freaking one of my favorites, No More Heroes, is so much wasting time. And I get that's the point, but it feels bad. Which mm-hmm. is why No More Heroes 2 really fixed that problem by having the minigames actually be kind of fun. So what about like linear games, like level-based games, like Mario, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Sonic even? Like, yes, yeah, so that's would you say thing, right? Would you say they're like... They're not capable of wasting your time because you can see the end of the destination or like... Well, no. Or No. You... Because I've definitely played a bunch of linear games that felt like they were wasting my time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, again, Alien Isolation, I feel like, is way too long. Yeah, but that's just like one walkthrough thing. I'm talking like level to level. Like Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm, say- I'm saying like just straight up... This game, as uh, this linear game that is basically go from here to point A to point B at any mm-hmm. given point, feels too long. Okay. I mean, shit, we can talk about Final Fantasy XV having the, essentially the cock and ball torture dungeon near the end of it, where it's just a bunch of connected rooms without your party members, I and it's just... Did you ever, Did you get to that part? I couldn't, dude. It got too no, boring. Dude, it's so long. I just couldn't get... I think I got, like, halfway through 15, and I'm like, dude, I can't handle, like, these 20-minute car rides and just mashing the button on these... Or, like, holding the button down to fight the monster. It just... I, the gameplay loop got way too boring, and the story I wasn't would, as gripping enough to me as it should yeah. have been. Like, It's just like, yeah, I like hanging out with the boys, and they're funny and all that, but, like... The, everything in between just sucks to get to that point. <laughs> There's a lot of No More Heroes 3 that kind of just feels like it could have been cut mm-hmm. without any real issues. No More Heroes 3 goes back to the chore system of No More Heroes 1, and it feels just as bad as it did in No More Heroes 1. Like, you get some other side missions, but they're not much better, and they very much feel cheap. Like, sometimes wasting time is, like, part of the game, and I understand yeah. that. Like, Mass Effect 2 is basically just about hanging out with your friends, and that's mainly it. Like, like the game's like, oh, you got a big suicide mission to beat the Reapers, and what it actually is is, I'm just gonna go hang out with Garrus and see what's up with him. Oh, he's a bad cop. Okay. Yeah. That's the bit. I'm gonna say, like, like, New Game Plus of Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal. It's rough. It is so rough because like, there's only Persona so. 5. Oh, I love it, it's it, one of it's Persona so Five Royal is one about. of my top ten favorite games of all time, but the re still the replay. Royal. I'm huh? still suck at like I'm still suck at like uh, Saijima's. I think it's Saijima. Dude, I beat Royal uh, probably Nijima's a, a Palace. week after it came out, and that was like nonstop playing. Holy shit! I got to like the the casino, and I was so so happy because it's my favorite dungeon in the game Mm -hmm. and i got to lot the boss of it and i saved right before i'm like i'll get back to this later and then i didn't for another two years yeah maybe three years now i'll also say royal is broken compared to the original base game like the the exploits you can do in that game or just make the game fucking trivial if you want to challenge play the original game (laughs) yeah royal's fucking busted it feels good it It feels better to play but it's if you were a veteran of the first game, it is so easy to break. Oh, yeah. Easily. Uh, but even then, oh, yeah. like, you play through this 120-hour average beat time game, right? And it is probably one of the most linear RPGs out there. And the only way you can get more content is by completing the social links, which is essentially talking to your buddies and ranking up the little cards. Well, yeah, but at least that's in, like content that's like actually interesting. Like it's it not is like an Ubisoft game where it's like go collect the seven Global Glob feathers. Yeah, 
If you collect all 70 million global gall feathers, you'll get to taste Ezio's asshole. Oh, God. It, but it's even like... The, but even, the, like, say you go through your new Game Plus playthrough and you got to complete all the social links you ever did. The only thing yeah. for you to do after that is literally just romance. Yeah, just pretty much and it. And if you want to go well, through... Well, no, there's a secret bosses as well. There, I, yeah, but I did that first playthrough. I did the yeah, Maruhi. I did the Maruhi stuff. It's not that hard. The therapist is literally the no, easiest. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Not what I'm talking about. Not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like specifically like uh, P4 protagonist. Uh, oh the, yeah. The, but even that you jail, naturally, the jail you naturally come across those. Jail like, sisters. Should you and choose the Grim to Reaper. do that content? But even then, yeah. you could just do. I'd say maybe play your play your first game. Do new game plus and miss all the social link shit you might have missed out on the first time, and then after that, yeah. you're good. Uh, unless you really want to see a romance scene, then just look it up. It's very you're... hard to ask me to play in a hundred hour game twice. Exactly. You have to be a huge yeah. fan. I haven't, I probably beat new game plus on persona five base like six times. Uh, I have, I've only ever gotten halfway through on a new game plus on Royal because there's just so much shit that I've already seen. And even then, should... like a lot of the contents were used from the original game. So it it should say something the Thousand Year Door, which is the remake is coming out soon, yeah. is my favorite game and it is just a really solid like thirty hours maybe. I'd say it's a pretty it's, long it's game just, for what it is. It, it's long but it's not too long. It's mostly killer with very little filler. I've seen There's like one of piece of filler I can think of in that entire game. Would you say it's, it's like, like the, the tournament something? No, the term is my favorite part of the game. You can go back and do it again, though, right? Like, yeah, you can. Yeah, but it, you get nothing for it. It's just, it's just. Hey, do you want to do it again? Did Did you like doing the fights? Do you want to test yourself now that you're stronger? Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll change it because they did show some new stuff in a recent trailer. Uh, they They showed an art book that you get more art pieces from from collecting shine sprites. Now you get pieces of the soundtrack. I, you know, uh, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and say I don't think art books now. are. A reason to up the cost of a game. I guess if you draw. No. And well, no, you I'd like say to... the fact that it's remade from the begin ground up. Well, like yeah, that. that I'm I'm saying like, oh, you can buy this super awesome deluxe edition and you get an art book. No, 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 no. This is in game. Cool. Like this isn't like you buy a deluxe edition and get an art book. This is like no, it's base game. It's just like now when you're collecting what you when you used to get like basically nothing. Now you get like some background stuff i mean that's kind of neat yeah like before it was just like oh you can buy upgrades and badges but the thing is like the best badges in the game were based on money and not the shine sprites mm -hmm. so it was mostly pointless unless you really wanted like upgrades from dazzle or something like that uh now they give you extra stuff as well oh yeah also weird thing uh they uncensored thousand year door it looks like Really? Uh, yeah, this is going off topic again. Uh, Vivian in Thousand Year Door is trans, just straight up. The and, ghost? Uh, oh no 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 the uh, the purple ghost. No, right? It's a purple ghost. Yeah. There's two uh, ghosts though. There's like the there's like the diva one, and then there's the there's the that one is one. not a ghost. She's like a cloud woman. Um, oh. No no. The like Vivian, the little, little witch ghost. Yeah. Uh, she's canonically trans, and that was censored in the Western uh, releases. Mm -hmm. So in the old version, uh, she was uh, relentlessly bullied for uh, not being born biologically a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the American remake, she was made fun of for being clumsy. So in the remake, uh, they showed the dialogue that was going to play there, and it is just... Uh, Bedlam or Beldum, her older sister being a transphobic piece of shit, and I'm just like, oh my god, we're actually talking about it. Cause I'm like, don't touch the dialogue in that game. Just yeah. don't touch it. It's perfect. Unless you're going to talk about Vivian actually being trans in the American version. Because I would mm -hmm. love to see that. Because Vivian's awesome. She's great. And her whole like leaving her sisters to join you thing makes way more sense when you consider the fact that her sister's like kind of a piece of shit. To her, and in general. So you think the length of that game is perfect, like 30 I think, hours? I think if your game is... I think if your game is 
fifth at least 15 hours of good good content mm-hmm. and i think that is worth i think that is worth 60 dollars i don't think any game should be worth above 60 dollars I, mean, I, I think seventy dollars a lot to ask for a game, but I think it it's way worse when you consider that a lot of these games are putting in like massive amounts of filler that just aren't nearly as or nothing at all. You got the whole the skull and bones game. situation where there's just skull fucking and bones nothing. Is a scam, dude. Skull and bones is a scam. I was scam. in the beta for that game. That game sucks ass. The, quadru- <laughs> the first quadruple A game. Oh, just oh. Mm-hmm. just come on. Bullshit. Like, if we're going to talk, like, quadruple A, like, if we really want to count quadruple A, let's count something like friggin' God of War Ragnarok, Mm. or, like... You know, I will say that I I think Ragnarok... Massive, huge time sinks with a massive amount of budget on display that feels like it costs the most ever. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't think quadruple A means it's better... I just think it means it's way more expensive looking. I don't even think quadruple Skull and Bones thing. I think is it's not... just some bullshit term oh, to make the bullshit. game sound more expensive. It's... Like, it's... Yeah, I know. It is bullshit. But, like, you can see it with certain games. Like, Baldur's Gate 3 is excellent, but yeah. doesn't look nearly as expensive. It's a much better game than God of War Ragnarok, but it doesn't look nearly as expensive cash money no. as God of War Ragnarok. You know what I mean? I will say I didn't. Uh, after I completed um, Ragnarok, and I 100%ed it, yeah. I felt like the game was was well worth the money. Yeah, I and I have issues with the game's pacing. I feel like it, re- especially near the end, where yeah. like, it feels like it really sputters out mm-hmm. until the last fight. Like, man, you do that first, like, boss fight where you need this, the, the third weapon. Yeah. Right? And it's, like, the big fight where you need that third weapon for. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I feel like that was supposed to be the final boss. It probably was... Um, and they were gonna have another game and realized they didn't have enough content for another game and so they just made that the last one. All in all, I still thought it was great, but... That was a great game! I understand what you mean by it. But, like, man, it overstays its welcome just due to the pacing. You know, the weird thing about that game was it was only the it was only the PS5 version that was $70. The PS4 version was still at 60 Yeah, I don't understand I mean, why, but... Because you'll pay for it. I did, but <laughs> if that, like, would I have gotten the same experience had I? I mean, I bought this, I bought that version too. So yeah, had I gotten the, the PS4 version, because I know it would have still played on my PS5. Uh, I don't. It might have just like capped the frame nice. rate on it or something. Well, I, I don't know if it would have looked as nice because it was using some like later graphics. I think it had ray tracing, but I could be wrong. You know, I don't even. I think what it does is just it scans remember. the. Like the disc doesn't even have the game on it anymore. It just has the code to oh, like yeah. to like pull it because you have to install it still. So I think yeah. it would have just if you would have bought the PS4 version and slapped it in the PS5, it would have just downloaded a the files for the PS4 version, and it, it would just purposely hold itself back compared to like if you got the PS5 version where you get all like the fancy graphics and shit. Yeah. Like, God, you know what game? You know what linear game was a complete waste of time. Huh. Like beginning to end, all of it was just wasting time. Friggin' Bullet Storm! I hate Bullet Storm so much. Mm-hmm. Beginning to end, nothing happens, and it's a waste of time. And by the time you finish the game, nothing else has happened, and it ends with just you finding out you wasted your time. It yeah. sucks, and I hate it so much. Sorry, so I got uh, one more topic long. I want to talk about. That game is tw- that game is twenty. Is, that game is like maybe like ten to fifteen hours long, and that's twenty five hours too long for that game. I wish I got <laughs> time back on my life before I played it. Well, that actually kind of leads into my um to my next topic. This will be our last topic, and we'll cut it off. But yeah. and Arbitch- maybe we'll stay on track for this one. Who knows? I probably, might not derail it. Probably, <laughs> probably not. not. It's a theme. Arbitrarily- this episode is just gonna be called a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> So what do you think about arbitrarily lengthening your game through difficulty? Some examples like Cuphead or Garlic or some very or like Kaizo Mario like shit. Something that that it's not it's not a long game, but it's so fucking hard that it takes you forever to beat it. So that depends. Mm-hmm. Because that 
goes into the uh the, like that that qualifies for a lot of games i mean we're talking like literally arcade games were built for that right exactly they were designed uh, to munch quarters and like get you to play uh but then again i'd have to say like probably one of the perfect examples would be cuphead right cuphead or dark souls one i feel Cup- like perfectly encapsulated. i don't know dark souls one i don't think it it was hard but i think it was mostly super I mean, dark jank. Souls one dark souls one you could beat in an afternoon Probably if, yeah, if you if, you're if you knew enough. what you were doing, but yeah, if you knew what you're doing, the game enough, also just that game feels afternoon. compared to three. One feels oh yeah, one hundred percent very janky. But there's a lot of content in it, and a lot of its length is coming from doing things over again and yeah. trying new ways of doing it. Uh, I love Dark Souls one, but yeah, Cuphead, Cuphead's, I've beaten Cuphead in about forty minutes before. S- Oh, uh, sorry, about, about about an hour, about an hour. Damn, my over. my record's about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I I've done the live stream of me speedrunning the game with one hand. It's great. Uh, you bastard. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't know if those streams are even still around anymore. I know the stream of the DLC was. Uh, I beat that. I actually recently like beat hours. the DLC for it. I love. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I think there's two ways of uh of what you're talking about there's two methods mm-hmm. and uh those would probably be either your cupheads your furies your dark souls uh and then we have <sighs> what about like contra ninja gaiden just uh difficult for being difficult it wasn't even like a, a curve like cuphead at least has a would, curve same with I dark souls like you learn the patterns ye are kung fu uh, Garden of Ban Ban and like a few other games are like examples of it being bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of Garden of Ban Ban. That game sucks. I have not. That game sucks ass. Like, oh my lord, it sucks ass. Okay, so it is a Five Nights at Freddy's style mascot horror game. Ugh, I already hate it. Uh, and it feels cheap and badly made. Uh, it's not scary at all. It is so pedantic. Uh, but, like, half of that game's difficulty is just from doing tasks that are so arbitrary and need to be done one specific way. Uh, and you can get that a lot from a lot of uh, point-and-click adventure games as well, where the difficulty isn't coming from it actually being difficult. The difficulty has to come from some moon logic that doesn't make sense or is so arbitrarily boring that it is... Like, literally, like, the, the theory of, like, why Garten of Ban Ban is a bunch of its, like, later features and later games is mm-hmm. because the games themselves are basically under two hours long, so they can technically be refunded on Steam. <laughs> so the bit was to make them artificially longer so that you couldn't refund it. You know... The, and it I'll really think. feels like that! Because there's so many areas that force you to be really slow... And that is the worst thing in the world. And like you talk about like Yar Kung Fu, where the game literally sends you back to the beginning if you do one thing wrong, mm-hmm. etc. Or uh, Takeshi's Challenge is like that as well, where it's not really difficult; it's just kind of bullshit. Mm-hmm. I feel like, like for a game to be lengthened by difficulty, it has to have at least a curve that can be learned and mastered. Like a curve that can be learned, sure, but it also needs to be like satisfying on its own merit. Like, I would say Cuphead from ground up is just really good boss fights that yeah. feel excellent. And the length does... the Because, the, again, I, again, I said I can beat the game in under an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game itself does get most of its length from you having to uh, like actually like take your time and learn the well, boss even fights. Even then, Cuphead has, struggle. like, sort of an excuse... For its length, especially once you start getting good at it, because the game was originally designed as a boss rush. Yeah. The running yeah. guns were just kind of added in because they could. And boy, does it feel like it, especially when you play the DLC and there's no running gun sections. Yeah. Which is just, oh, merciful, because I hated the running gun sections. I didn't mind them, but they didn't feel necessary. Like, they were definitely not as fun as okay. the boss fights. I, I, want, I want to iterate, they aren't bad. They're just not nearly as good as the boss fights. Exactly. Like the boss fights are so excellent. And you're looking at it, three worlds, each having like five to six bosses in them. And they're all so good. Except so for the fucking robot guy. I hate that fucking guy. That guy sucks. Ro- that, yeah, robot guy is my speedrun killer. Same. 
it's I either beat Robot it in guy two and minutes dragon. or I play it like twenty times over. Robot guy or dragon are like my two speedrun killers. Dragon. Everyone easy. else I can deal with. Dragon is piss easy to me. Not if you're playing it with one hand. That well, I don't know what to tell you for that one. <laughs> B is also very difficult with one hand. Mm -hmm. Because you have to aim up and down a lot, and doing that with one hand is really difficult. I'm actually planning on eventually doing a stream because I, I did off topic. I have a DDR dance pad. You're not gonna do Cuphead with a DDR. I think you're. Oh. No, no, no. Sorry. Okay, I didn't. I didn't want to get your hopes up that much. No, okay. I'm gonna do it with a DDR dance pad and a Wii remote. How? So I. That's the problem. Is I haven't figured out how. The idea I have right now is if I can connect a Wii Remote and get it to register me pointing up as the up arrow, I could do a, 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 a run of the game where I actually have to go left and right in the dance pad and I have to aim up to aim up or aim down to aim down. You're a psycho. I know what I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to always keep it in front of me. And I have to move... I, I, I'm like... I've. Played, I've beaten Cuphead maybe a million times. I Same. need to know. I need to make it weird. You have to at this point. I have to. Otherwise, I either gotta get the Donkey Kong bongos out or I get the DDR dance pad out. I'd rather see the bongos. <laughs> Most people would rather see the bongos, but I'm weird. Yeah, uh, that's fine. But yeah. No, yeah. The difficulty. I think difficulty to pad out your game is. Fine, depending on if learning that difficulty curve is satisfying. Mm -hmm. Like Cuphead, you're constantly getting better yeah. as you're playing it. So that difficulty curve feels a lot better over time. And the difficulty that's actually holding you back is learning the enemy's patterns and how the attacks work. Same with Fury. Yeah. Or F-U-R-I. I don't know if you ever played that. I have. It's really good. Uh, that game can be beaten in like like an hour by speedrunners. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, the actual, like, learning the boss fights and taking your time to get good at them is what makes the game, like, the length it is, and it's so good. Then what about roguelikes? But, like, you can buff yourself up the more you go, but even then, have you even beaten the game? Because even if you do reach the end on some of these hypothetical Like, endings, beating it once is only the beginning of the game. Exactly, like Hades. Hades, like, yes. Hades is a perfect example. Uh, I actually just started playing the technical test for Hades too. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, I heard you already beat it. After. Twice, actually. <laughs> Jesus, man. Okay, Dude. the end of the test is literally tells you, hey, once you beat this five times, please just stop playing it. Really? Like that's that that's that is when we consider your participation in this test complete. I'm like, yeah, okay. Makes sense. I already met my wife in the game, so there you go. That was nice. I already met Arachne, my spider wife. I love her. Uh, <laughs> man, I really hope this doesn't end the same way that the Deuce of Romance path ends. Because, man, I know how to pick them. I always choose the girls that reject me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the worst. Like, oh, man, I love Medusa. Oh, her romance path ends with you, her rejecting you. I'm like, oh. Okay. I didn't know that. I was going for Meg. Oh, yeah. No, that, you see, that was a smart option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the just, I, as I said, I'm a much bigger fan of a shorter game that's all killer, no filler, than a longer game that is mostly filler. Same. Like, that kind of thing. But I will never, I will me. never, like, reject a lot, like, a, a lengthy adventure should I have sure. the time. Because, like, with Breath of the Wild, Baldur's Gate... God of War Ragnarok, and cert at least for the most part of it, like they feel good to play, and the stories and what you discover just keeps you tied to it. But the, at my current point in life, I think I'm with you. Where I like a good eight to fifteen hour experience is all I need to feel satisfied. Yeah, it, but even then, like you got the price you got to deal with, and you got to like hope to God that like what you're investing into, because not even though it is the rise of indie games, not all indie games are that great. Not all indie games are made equal. Exactly. This, like, and there, are, this is not the shit on indies. I love like most of my favorite games I'm playing right now. Have been indie games. Half my uh, channel revolves around the indie scene, so literally it like, keeps my inspiration alive to like keep doing this shit. But like, 
Holy shit. Shout like, there's some one fucking speed. stinkers out there. <laughs> Shout out to Sanabi. Sanabi's excellent. Mm-hmm. I was just playing Killbug before we got on stream, which is also great. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, is there any others I want to shout out? Since I just said, like, there's a lot of bad indies, I want to shout out some really good ones. The ones that aren't, like, already being shouted out a ton. Like, I'm not going to say Faith, because Faith is excellent and everyone knows it's excellent. Faith? Oh, I love so, Faith. Yeah, Faith is, is just impeccable. So I want to shout out something that you don't see a lot of, like, love for. You know what? The Axe Cop game's pretty sick. Though I'm biased because I, I know the guy who made it. <laughs> oh. That's still pretty cool. No, yeah. Uh, but no, yeah. Uh, like, okay, you want to know it's a great, like, example of, like, $60 for a short game that I do think was worth the money? Hit me with it. Let's talk about Dishonored. You know, Dis the first Dishonored one, can... yes. The second one... I'm not talking about Dishonored 2. I'm talking about Dishonored. I like Dishonored two a lot. I think it's I think it's worth the money, but I don't like it as much as Dishonored one for a few reasons. Mainly because uh, Dishonored one is a lot m tighter. Like it feels like a lot more controlled. It's shorter, but it feels so much more tight. It does. Like, I can go back and replay Dishonored one a million times and do a million different types of playthroughs. Like I've done full pacifist, uh, full aggro, uh, low chaos, high kill counts. Jeez. Or, uh, sorry, low chaos only kills, but, like, I'm only killing the person at the end, like, the, the evil at the end, like, stuff like that. Right. I've been doing one playthrough that I've been loving so far, which is, uh, just, just straight up, uh, can only be act, can only be acts of coincidence. Like, they have to be kills that cannot be traced back to a person. Jeez. Uh, so if I ever, if I, I, I'm going full kill, however, uh, none of the kills can be traced back to me. So it has to be like, I have to drop like an anvil on someone's head or something. Yeah, but you have that variety. And I think that's what gives yeah. Dishonored the most, what gives and it its replay give, value is because there's so many different ways to play it. And that's and, what gives like player, that's what gives people the, the motivation to play like a lot of M Sims, like the stuff that Arcane has made. Yeah. Uh, Deathloop, uh, Dishonored, Prey. Uh, which I'm only going to refer to as Psycho Shock from here on out because that's what it should have been called. Prey. Um, yeah, the original. Uh, I guess originally the name was supposed to be Psycho Shock, and yeah. then it got renamed to Prey because they own the IP. Um, Damn. Or Bethesda well, own the IP rather. I like but your yeah, idea I'm, of um, shouting out a couple indie titles. So yeah. let's do that. Oh, but sorry, we'll, sorry. Can we'll I can it. I finish my thought real quick? Oh yeah, sure. Go for it. I, I, but Dishonored One can be beaten in about two hours. Like, it's not a long game, especially if you're just doing, like, the main content. and just I don't... suck at Dishonored, it... but I love it. I love Dishonored. <laughs> it's so much fun to dick around in because there's so many different ways to do it. Like, going through it, like going through that one, like, the, the party side quest peacefully is so fascinating because you have mm -hmm. to talk to people. You have to find out which of the girls is the right one. Meanwhile, doing a full aggro is just, all right, kill everyone at this party. Let God sort them out. But that's so fun. <laughs> it's so much... This thing, neither of the runs feels worse than the other. They're both really fun for their own reasons. Mm. It's so cool. And I love it. It's really well made. And despite the fact it's only two hours of the... It's like really only a two hour long game, you get way more content just from like how fun the content that's there is. Like I'll go back and replay Dishonored 1 a million times because it's so fun. And, then, and even Dishonored 2, like, despite my issues with it, mainly just due to how it ran before, mm -hmm. and, like, the, admittedly, the, the the most bad reason to like the first one more is if I quick load in, <laughs> in Dishonored 1, it is a split second. Meanwhile, I have to wait at least 10 seconds for it to lo load a quick save. Jesus. In Dishonored 2, because that's how I did my, that's how I did my, uh, my no chaos runs. I would quick save constantly, and if I ever got caught, I'd just quick load. But it takes longer in Dishonored 2. It's such a stupid bullshit reason to like one more, but it really, it really does make the difference for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you want to shout out some indie games? Sure. Um, let's see. I guess I'll try to go on the lower end too, but I'll do my best. Shout out to Dead West. Oh, Fantastic cool. stealth game. I love it. Yeah, game's dope. Uh, let's see. Rusted Wait, Moss. Dead? Wait, Dead West or Blood West? Blood West. I keep saying okay. Dead West. Blood West. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, Blood West is sick. Yeah. No, okay, Blood that's West. what I thought you meant, but I wasn't sure. Because I'm like, wait. Because no, Dead West, West is a game too. 
Uh, I've, I've not played Dead West, I'm afraid. I haven't either, but I know it's out there. Blood West. Rusted Moss. Sick. Yeah. Really good. Um, yeah, Rusted Moss, I saw your review for that. It looked sick. It's it's really good. Yeah. And Cyberhook. It's another good one. I think I've uh, heard of that. Yeah. Garlic. Christ made me want to mash my own balls into paste, but I need, I need to look at hell. that because I enjoy hard games. It is a hard 2D platformer, and it was actually right. on Game Bracket as a mystery fighter. I'm, I, I'll be real. I haven't watched all the Game Bracket stuff. I need to see that. The Game Bracket is such a fucking... Holy shit. It's a, such a labor of love. I don't even know when I'm going to do the next one. Oh, but whatever. Um, uh, I have, I have uh, about two more I would shout out. We'll do if, one if more. What's another great one I've played? Satisfactory. I've always loved Satisfactory. That's more of a double A game at this point, but yeah, it's, it's very good. Humble Beginnings. Yeah, Humble Beginnings. Uh, I want right. to also shout out Pseudo Regalia. It is like six dollars. It's like maybe an hour long, but it's really good, like N sixty four style platformer. It's what really should have been Castlevania sixty four, but you know, wasn't. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also going to shout out uh, Garden Guardian, which is like three bucks, and it is basically a phone game, but it's it's very like it's a very nice little thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I I'm in this point in my life, if my choice is between the really big super content rich game that's like a million hours or the not quite as big compact tight knit game I'm probably going to choose the shorter game only because I know I'll at least get through it for the most part. Do you mean that in like an indie sense or it could be like any type of funding? Most types of funding I would yeah. say. Indies I don't really expect to be super long because I mean they're not dealing with like the mega millions budget that a lot of AAA games have. True. So they can't afford that. Like, I mean, shit. Fear and Hunger is another good example. Don't look that up. Like, it's the best game I can recommend. No one. <laughs> uh, but Fear and Hunger, like, you can beat in like roughly forty minutes. Really. I feel. I feel the same way. But, like, it's very a shit. Zillion amounts. I had a whole like, ass week to hours. try and beat Baldur's Gate three, and I still couldn't. Oh, dude, it's it's such a long thing. Such That's the only game. thing keeping me from playing Baldur's Gate three is I'm just like, there's so much left. I know. There's so much. But it's so good. Right. It's so good, but it's so much that it's just it, it feels intimidating so and daunting. So I, I just end up being like, I don't want to play it. I'm just gonna go back to playing Judgment, which Carlyle, is also a long game, beloved. but at least Carl like my beloved, <laughs> best girl, absolutely, best girl. I love her. You want to talk right. about? You want? To, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of women who hurt you when they touch you. On <laughs> as as applied by Rogue. God. All right. Thank you all for watching, all right. geeks. We'll like see you next time. And with a brand new topic to that we'll definitely derail from. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe to Super Bunny Hop. Do that. <laughs> Bye. <Yeah. laughs> Bye. Love you.